Welcome back to the Torque Test channel. We polled our viewers and over 12,000 of you voted and wanted to see high power EDC style flashlights tested next, around 2,000 lumens, thereabouts, some more, some less. So we bought everything from a sub $30 popular on Amazon option to an over $250 USA made Surefire. So we're gonna lumen test these lights versus their flashy claims using our integrating sphere that while calibrated with the results from a professional lab is obviously very DIY and drop test them because while they advertise things like military grade aluminum and tactical busting doors down attributes, no one seems to want to really destructive test these things and maybe brand deals won't allow creators to, then again, these ain't cheap and this sort of feels wrong inside, so I get it. And of course, measure their lumen output over time and real battery size and charging time as well. Starting off in order of price, we have the Workos FC11 we bought for $27. It's the lowest cost option in our group today and comes with it the lowest lumen rating too at 1300 lumens. But we chose this one because by all reports the brand makes decent lights, it's not a no-name Amazon brand, and it's offered in a 4000K color temperature like this one that we bought here. 4000K being on the warm end of the spectrum which is nice on the old eyeballs after using these around an engine bay or wheel well long enough. And for color identification as well, this light has a true to color rendering index of 90 out of 100. Most of the lights we've had tested that we sent to the lab are around 72 to 84. So I felt the comparably modest 1300 lumens in this crowd would be worth that trade off. And it is nice in an engine bay, a little spot focused for our needs, but you might prefer a high candela focus for yours. Gotta say though, it doesn't shock the old corneas with brightness on this one. Let's see what the sphere has to say. After running the light maxed out for 30 seconds per the ANSI F1 standard, we see like 980, 985, and that's no fluke. This light holds down to adjust, which is pretty cool. Back into its highest and we see 1,992 maybe. So first light sees about 990 out of its 1,300 claimed. That's 76%. The 5,000K color temp version also advertises 1,300 lumens though, and that warmer light doesn't come for free in my experience. There's lumens spent efficiency wise getting there. So perhaps they just blanket rated this light Still a bit misleading perhaps there. Our next light in price is a solid 2000 lumen option and only $33. And showed up looking a lot like the Workos, mainly in the head. Turns out this SC31T made by Sofern is a sort of sister brand of that Workos. Though besides being both quintessential 18650 battery size EDC lights with a 3000 milliamp hour cell and USB-C, they are quite different. The Sofern is a tail switch style 2000 lumen model and in person does appear much brighter but also much cooler in the color temp. The Workos has a tail magnet but both have the same spot focus throw in the light and it's enough to wash out some details if used in high. Let's see if that makes as much as it claims in contrast to its sibling though. Of its 2000 lumens it looks to make 2088, 2079, 2075, 2073. Yeah, right on the money, we're calling that 2075 lumen, or 104% of claimed good stuff. Our next light is a mini EDC using an 18350 rather than a removable 18650, but in other ways it's very much not mini, as this Emilent LD70 advertises 4000 lumens from a coin pocket sized light. Emilent being no stranger to crazy high lumen lights, they make the brightest flashlight in the world that we souped up and were after I saw black spots every time I closed my eyes for a couple days. This tiny tot uses the same Cree XHP 70.2 LED in this model and just subjectively speaking in the last week I found this one being pretty sweet little package for automotive use. Yes it's stupid bright if you need it to be which you probably won't but it also has a soft spot focus and at its 900 lumen high setting reveals a lot of detail on small parts. Its size allows you to hold it in a fist fashion and operate its tail switch, which makes it great for inspection purposes. It has a plastic shroud around the body, probably because it would get quite hot in the hand otherwise, but I find it saves it from a fair amount of scuffs and scrapes with this, and while not removable, its battery charges with this magnetic cord that snaps on, which is easier than fumbling around with USB cables. Again though, that's all your mileage may vary type stuff. If you're looking just for a hiking light, this probably sucks. But this channel is more about the objective numbers, so let's see what it can really make of its lofty 4000 lumen figure. Looks like 3360, 3362, and it dives from there. Which is frankly not all that surprising to us. Yes, an XHP 70.2 can make over 4000 lumens driven at a stable 6 or 12 volt, 
but asking that of a single 18350 battery for 30 seconds or longer is a bit far-fetched. It spikes up to 4,000 for half a second maybe before trailing off. That's 84% of advertised as we see it. Many more lumens off here, but percentage-wise, closer than the workos. Our next light was supposed to be an MSR model many of you requested, but the channel's newish PayPal account wasn't agreeing with the website, so perhaps in a future episode. Actually, we looked past quite a few models for other reasons too. Rapid step-down times, like the only 40 seconds of turbo time on this Ace Beam, and Phoenix we've had a lot of luck with, as shown here it has a quick step down as well, like most EDC lights tend to we find, but even has charts on his website that you don't really need us to see, like on this PD35 model and we find their claims to be usually pretty spot on in the lumens on this channel. But what we did buy is this, the Thrunite TT20, this $70 light advertises as much as 2,526 lumens, but what interested me was it uses a 21700 cell which makes it a bit bigger overall, but not massively so, and hopefully that will help it to stay at higher lumen levels for longer, and it also advertises an infinity high setting, so we're looking forward to seeing some lumens that maybe don't step down as much as we're used to seeing on these things. One downside is this 21700 cell appears to not be a universal design, it has negative and positive poles on one end. Not ideal. This is charged with USB-C, and yeah, it's, it's bright. Even in this bunch, it looks bright. But exactly how bright? Well, of its advertised 2,526 lumens, it's able to put out 2540, 2580, 2566, call that about 2570, which we're splitting hairs here, calling that anything other than 100% of its score, seeing exactly what we expected, very nice. Our next purchase is from a light brand that probably emails us more than any other, trying to send us samples and share a 10% plus sales commission on anything that we link to, it's Olight, which means there's probably plenty of Olight reviewers out there already due to this type of correspondence, but not too many of them spiking them on the ground, so we still include them sometimes. This is the Warrior Mini 2, a $90 EDC light that advertises 1750 lumens, and I gotta say, it commands all of that $90 when it comes to the feeling of quality on this one. Ignoring the Apple-like packaging BS, this flashlight is the first of this bunch to really feel expensive. The through night is nice, don't get me wrong, it's just maybe the small things, like partly this clicky wiggly modes button, but like listen to the threads here on the through night. And listen to the threads on the O light. The thread peaks are even smoothed over, less sharp, more oiled, thicker O-ring, and this type of charging is pretty clutch for a mechanic just tossing it back into the hutch, though I understand has other pitfalls being exposed like this. And it's usually fast charging too, though on this light we strangely only got 1.3 to 1.5 amps when we usually see 2 amps on O lights. The through night does reach that 2 amps. One thing that makes it not ideal for us, at least at work, is that it's the most spot focused of the bunch. High Candela is good for distance, but looks like a ring of fire on anything up close. Let's move on from silly things like touch and feel, and let's see what kind of light this 1700 lumen flashlight really puts out. So after 30 seconds it's seeing... 1900, 1883, 1885, yeah, we're gonna call that 1885, and it holds there pretty steadily too. That's 8% more than we expected, 108% of advertised, noise. Okay, last contender before we look at light output over runtime, that's the Surefire Fury, a brand name often asked about in our comments section, so we gave it a look. This is a 1500 lumen model that we paid about as much as all the others combined so far for, 250 bucks. But it is made in the US, and it is a brand known for their weapons-mounted tactical reputation. Can't say I keep up with who sits at the cool kids table when it comes to the EDC cafeteria though. We just try to show you what they do here. Gotta say, even looking past the modest recycled paper looking packaging, this light doesn't scream pricey in the hand. It's sort of bulky for an 18650 light. It's a tail switch with not very many modes, I like that, mainly low and high, with a proximity sensor that isn't overly sensitive and stupid like some can be, so that's nice I think, though the sensor does leave a bite out of that light pattern. In the hand though, it's larger than the 21700 cell through night, but the through night, maybe I'm just a flashlight casual here, feels higher quality. And brace yourself, gonna talk about threads again, the Surefire has non-hardco anodized just bare aluminum threads that sort of feel gritty, and if I'm being honest, they're sort of sharp and pitted too. 
compare that to the Olight that has squared off thread peaks and is butter smooth. This may sound subjective, but fact is the $27 work cost anodized threads just speak higher quality. But the hits keep coming. The Surefire is also the only light of this group to use the dreaded micro USB still and charges on the battery only, which means you have to remove the battery to charge it. And that battery we had a hard time testing because it keeps just stopping charging. Turns out that that micro USB port is a bit loose. And if you didn't lay this setup against something to prop the cable up, it just wouldn't charge. And when it would, it's at the slowest rate of the bunch, about 0.4 amps. But does that mean this is a terrible light? Well, no, you can of course use your own 18650 if you want. And it is bright in person and nearly as spot focused as the Olight, thanks to its tactical roots, I'm sure. It is the heaviest light here, so maybe it's just a tank. We're soon gonna find out in that regard. Let's see how many lumens it makes. The 1500 lumen Surefire makes 1509, 1505, 1496. Yep, 1500 lumens on the dot, and we'll take that, nice. One thing we find with EDC lights is that the lumens they plaster all over the product name don't last all that long at those levels of heat and for battery reasons. We're gonna look at the light output over runtime now and see how these three up first look. All three drop down out of high or turbo quite quick with the emolent being the furthest to fall and being a sort of micro light and battery dies off first at 45 minutes exactly where it advertises to. The remaining two lights are of similar origin but the warmer color Workos spends most of its life in just the 200 to 300 lumen range. The Sofern dying off first but still three hours that's not bad and the lower output Workos making it to three hours 45 but not super useful for much of that time. Of our next three lights, we're gonna start with the Through Night in its infinity high mode rather than turbo, which might help it if the naming really means anything. Let's see how they do. The O light is the first light of this size to still be around 1000 lumens after the first test mark, but thereafter joins the others which have both dropped down as well. The Through Night holds a higher baseline light output at 700, but is still reduced by half from where it started. Despite having the largest capacity 18650, the Surefire is first to go at two and a half hours, followed by the Through Night and Olight. Looking at all the data, you can tell that the Thrunite uses a 21700 cell and that the Emelin uses an 18350. It's dramatic enough to be clear. Of the 18650 lights, the Olight was a standout strictly looking at the curves. In this first 20 minutes in particular, I find to be pretty important as that's where you're gonna use this handheld light the most and it'll probably be cool enough to start off from here each time you use it. And these stats agree with that assessment too. Totaling the lumen minutes as measured, basically the sum of our measurements, the through night with its larger battery totaled 8282. And in second, we have the Olight with 7,441. Then the Sofern, then Surefire, Emolent, and Workos. The Emolent sort of cheating by starting so high and the Workos being less efficient with that warmer hue chip. But also massively undersold its runtime. This one hour and 20 minutes advertised, we saw more like three hours and 40, most of it quite low. This three hours was correct. This 45 minute also spot on. The through nights four hours we saw three hours and 15 minutes of, and this four hours 20 minutes of the Olight we saw exactly four hours and 21 minutes. Seems like our timer works about as well as some of these brands do. But the Surefire's three and a half hours on high, not the case we saw two and a half hours. And that's with the highest capacity 18650 as we measured them, which you can see here. Now all this data is fine and dandy, but if a flashlight designed to be carried every day can't handle being dropped nearly as often, it might not be super useful to you. So we basically dropped them like they're hot at increasing the heights to see how they compare against each other and the other 60 lights that we've tested now. The $27 work cost does your standard three to four foot drops, no problem, moving past those first three drops. It's at six feet after two drops that it calls it quits, starts flashing and won't stay lit. That's not great, bottom third of our testing overall Four out of 10. The Sofern does a bit better moving on from the initial hip and waist drops to the six foot where it didn't have a problem. So 10 foot is where it really meets its end. One to two drops in and it's flickering, dimming on and off. Three drops and it was dead six out of 10. The Immolent has a plastic shroud on the outside which is nicer to hold when it heats up but that mainly helps with its side impacts. It popped the retaining front ring off the shroud at six feet and eventually lost its battle at two drops at 10 feet 
all damage done when hitting its face. Side drops were fine, but your mileage may vary depending on how it lands. 5 out of 10 due to seeing damage quite early. The Thru Knight is penalized for its larger battery by being heavier, though moved beyond the 3 foot drops, the 6 foot drops, and the 10 foot drops. And now you get to watch it slowly die after its first 12 foot drop. No more clicky clicky. That's a 7 out of 10. Here's the Olight. 4 foot, 6 foot, 10 foot drops. The clip can come off, but also snaps back on easily when needed. 16 foot drops, 20 foot drops. This model moves into the elite class of lights that we've had to resort to spiking it on the ground in order to cause it to give up the ghost. Not something I enjoy, but you have to get the data point when you need the data point. This one lasted between what I'd call a good chucking to the ground and everything I had, which would have been in the next one or two spikes if it had persisted. A well-earned 10 out of 10 in durability, not something we often see in this flashlight class, usually just in work lights. On to the Surefire. This is where you'd like to see your tactical patriotic dollars shine. The Fury likes to shut off when it's dropped, but just needs to be turned back on each time. 4 foot, it was fine. 6 foot is fine. 10 foot's 3 drops were fine as well. One drop at 12 feet and it still works, but it is intermittent. It strobes and sort of dims now. It's essentially not super useful at this point, though one more drop from this height would quickly relegate our $250 investment to the parts pile. So this is how it looks. The Surefire placed exactly as the Thru Knight did in drops and also gets a 7. Above average when including all brands like Amazon brands, but about average including only name brands. Their charge times were mostly uneventful. Here's what they advertise, and here's how long each of them took. The Thru Knight was 40 minutes longer for us, but that Surefire, again with the surprises, maybe it's that spotty connection, but our USB logger's only time when the current is flowing, not sure how, but nine hours is what it took to fully charge. By the numbers, this is probably last, and well, it's $27 for that work cost, but if you included overall size, weight, threads quality, battery quality, battery connection quality, USB-C versus micro USB all along with this, I don't know how you couldn't place the Fury in last place. Again, I'm a bit ignorant and maybe that's a good thing. We just test what's shipped to us when we click buy. As for the winner, I think it's the first time they'll take an overall victory in an episode we've done and they sure email us all the damn time and you've probably got plenty of other YouTubers reviewing these because of it, but it's gotta be the Olight Warrior Mini 2. The things that Thru Knight did better were mainly a result of using a larger 21700 cell battery, I think, which if you wanted to, you could just buy an Olight Seeker 3 Pro or Olight Seeker 3, which we've tested and beats the Thru Knight everywhere. With all of these out on the table, it's the one that we could point to and say objectively that it is the best, and its quality in the hand was just surprising to me as well, but I suppose $90 is not exactly cheap for an EDC light, so you should maybe expect that. The Sawfern gets the award for best value, we think really a good product for $33, that one. All that said, to be honest, over the last two weeks owning these, I used the little emolent the most. Its light spread is pleasant both up close and far away, and it's a natural handhold for inspection purposes. The numbers don't support that at all, purely an opinion, of course. Just found it super handy. So there you have it. Thanks for voting if you voted on our community poll. Appreciate you joining us. We make episodes like this at least every Friday. Subscribe if that sounds like something you're into, and thanks for watching.